Functional medicine encourages a look upstream of a problem. Unfortunately, in this country and several others, the tendency is to simply just prescribe another pill for a problem. I see a lot of patients with a diagnosis of ADHD or narcolepsy, and I'm not doubting that that doesn't exist to a large extent widely across vast swaths of humanity, but I think the tendency often is to find an easy answer or a quick fix in the five to 10 minutes that are typically allotted in a medical appointment. And this is an educational presentation, but this is just a few things that I've observed in the past decade. A lot of people come away with a diagnosis of ADHD or narcolepsy, when in fact, it may be something else. It may be poor sleep, sleep apnea, undiagnosed mental illness, substance abuse, a whole variety of other things can certainly play into this. Uh, the issue of teaching quality of the institutional educational system we better know as, well, I won't tell you what my kids call it, but anyways, you know where I'm getting at. As of 2018, over 16 million U.S. adults were taking some form of stimulant. I think that, that in itself points to a societal issue that has unaddressed. These drugs have side effects. There is no drug without a side effect, but particularly the amphetamines when used in the context of ADHD, I'm not talking about crystal meth or illicit substances, although there are also amphetamines, they have side effects. They can be good, bad, or ugly. Some of the serious things, and I'm just going to blow through these quickly, dependency, abuse, psychosis, mania, aggressive behavior, sudden death, heart attack, stroke, hypertension, Cardiomyopathy, which is long-term use damaging the heart permanently. Seizures, anaphylaxis, which is a life-threatening reaction. A variety of other serious skin conditions that can basically be equivalent to a second or third degree burn. Priapism, constriction of peripheral blood vessels, Raynaud's phenomena, growth suppression in long-term use in pediatric patients. Muscle breakdown, kidney failure, withdrawal symptoms, and then the more common ones such as nausea, vomiting, emotional ability, weight loss, sexual dysfunction, libido changes, speech disturbances, tics, elevation of blood pressure, palpitations, impotence, visual disturbances, restlessness, teeth problems, and photosensitivity. The list is not short. There's an interesting study of 1,200 males. This is illicit use, but... It was an effort to categorize the number that have problems with sexual dysfunction. It's something that, as a men's health physician and a functional medicine physician, I see a lot of. In that study, it was around 50-50. It was really difficult to predict who would have side effects, obviously underlying health problems like heart problems or stroke or blood pressure issues or other uh, serious comorbidities play a role, but about half of those patients had some form of dysfunction in the bedroom. I see a lot of men who are using uh, Adderall or a variety of other stimulant medications to treat uh, what has been diagnosed as an attention problem, and they suffer the consequences. And this is an educational presentation. I'm not giving advice about what to do or not to do. I think the best advice is to really discuss this in detail with the prescribing provider. Adding another pill to the mix doesn't often always solve the problem. It's something that I see and deal with on a daily basis and it's a little bit challenging to always find a solution. More is not always better and adding additional ingredients to the soup, if you will, doesn't always make it taste better.